let's move on to 3.2 dispersion so before that uh, we should talk about uh, how communication is affecting our life in history um, communication was very important uh, especially in military uh, and also navigation so imagine uh, you were driving uh, a ship or boat and you, you don't want to clash with other people or you want to send uh, an information uh, to uh, people who are far away from you or in the military uh, events you want to communicate with your teammates so you need to use the Morse code uh, which involve uh, short and long and then that involve like how you can switch on the lamp for long or short and so um, apparently it was very difficult and of course uh, nowadays we don't use it as much uh, especially in computer we use on and off so one and zero instead of uh, long and short uh, for communication so um, some other things may arise is uh, the signal in itself uh, may get weaker and weaker and just like uh, when you use Wi-Fi um, apparently when you get away from the router your signal will be weaker also uh, that's this um, analogy is not exact idea but then uh, you may you may try to perceive it this way first so let's take a look of what we are expected to learn and what I actually want you to read is actually page 29 to 30 uh, but then let, let's take a look at what you are expected to to know first because uh, the topic in itself is quite broad and if you want to study really in depth uh, there's a lot of things you, you, you can learn for sure in physics or engineering so I, I want to make it clear to you uh, since this is more like a video for you to actually uh, cope with the IB syllabus so let's let's try to see what are the boundaries so uh, we have to, of course, first of all, study optical fiber structure, which we did actually did in uh, the previous video. For this video, we talk about two kind of fibers. One is called step index. One is called grade index. And we will also talk about the two kind of dispersion. So one is called waveguide dispersion. One is called the material dispersion uh, in the optical fiber. Uh, attenuation we talk about in the next video. And for application and skills, we'll talk about how waveguide and material dispersion will lead to attenuation uh, and how this can be accounted for. So uh, the reason why they will have this kind of dispersion and also um, I think here will be qualitatively to uh, describe what happened in the next video when we uh, more in depth to talk about attenuation we we'll do some calculation okay so this this chapter I mean this video is more qualitative uh, so some reading for you to read uh, this we'll talk about next video next video as well here uh, is that the term waveguide dispersion uh, will be used in exam waveguide dispersion sometimes as known as mo modal dispersion okay and there's no not really an equation you have to learn uh, and I mean a new equation for you to know okay so uh, I want you to spend some time uh, read page 29 and 30 um, what I want you to do actually is as we said there are two kind of dispersion you may want to follow my table here two kind of dispersion write down the name uh, what are the costs so what's the reason why they will happen uh, actually the idea is uh, somewhat similar to the situation where we talk about the lens and mirror like the chromatic aberration and uh, what's the other one the um, spherical aberration okay and we of course uh, whenever we talk about like uh, these things happen we also want to talk about so how how scientists or engineers in the past uh, try to improve it right because out uh, at the end of the day ultimately uh, the reason why we study science and engineering or STEM in general is uh, hopefully to improve our life and to understand our universe more okay so uh, pause the video now and try to get the summary for uh, to yourself and we'll check the answer okay so here are something that I would like to uh, point it now to you first before we come to the uh, table conclusion so the first thing uh, you may find out is called the material dispersion and uh, it is due to the different wavelength of the lights you know different color they have you know different wavelength and that will lead to different speed we learned about it in year 10 
it, this is actually found by Isaac Newton when he accidentally shined the light. I don't know where this, you know, you know, people will never know right, whether it's accident or not, or he deliberately do it uh, into a prism, and that prism would spread out the light, and then the light would. Well, I don't know whether I draw it correctly. Uh, spread the light further, so you know, red and violet, something like that. Okay, and in terms of the fiber, optical fiber, just now when we talk about like in the in the past Morse code, and there isn't much issue about dispersion because there's no I mean it's either it's more about whether the the other side the people would, would be able to catch and then uh, translate properly here all right some new problem arises um, the signal will get weaker because uh, the as you could read um, the time that it reached to the other end would therefore be different because they will travel at different speed right so imagine uh, the signal would just simply be strange when it's supposed to be like this or right, a very strong and sharp signal involving uh, a mixture of all the light so this is more like a white light all right so this is like the I ideal case but then as input of course and then uh, when you go to the other side and receive it because of some light go faster some light go not as fast then you, you kind of have a normal distribution, all right? Of course, the middle one will be the most, and that's why there's a hump here, okay? So uh, you can see, of course, uh, the area will, I mean, the, the width, I should say, as you can see here, will be wider, will be more spread out. Uh, at the same time, since, assuming there's some energy get lost, which, of course, it would happen, uh, then the area should be somewhat smaller. So if you try to integrate this area and integrate this area, all right, the new area here should be smaller, a little bit smaller maybe, all right, depending on the attenuation. We will talk about it in the next video. Okay, so um, here are two names, which I think is self-explanatory, but I don't really think it's necessary for IB, okay, because um, I never see it, but I think it's good to know about the name. The second dispersion is called the waveguide dispersion. So just now, uh, let's quickly talk about it again. It's due to different wavelength. Here, it's due to the different path, right? Because some some lights they will travel more straight. Some light will travel more like at the side. So different path basically. Just like the diagram here, uh, the green one is relatively more straight, right? While the red one actually travel. Uh, up and down more time so red actually will take longer time to travel to I mean path in terms of path is longer but in terms of time it depends because red is supposed to be faster so uh, that would be the same that, that would be the case for a waveguide in terms of the path only okay and in reality of course both of these would happen uh, in the you know in the optical fiber so how, how do we deal with that uh, there are actually uh, three kind of fiber you can see in the diagram uh, let me ask you which one is the one that is the most basic like the first one happened in history of course the most basic like the weakest one or right, I don't know whether I should say that all right which that would be the middle one all right because middle one is just a, like a normal one if you think about that because uh, we only have like just like the previous video we have optical fiber and then there's something called cladding and then it's like if you try to look at from this side it's just simply uh, I mean just, just like the video I mean just like the picture here uh, this is a cladding and nothing special I mean you just use a, a, a somewhat a normal kind of plastic um, material to make it and I mean normally material will be having the same refractive index throughout Right, so that's why uh, for this one we call it step index because if you look at the refractive index profile, it, you can see that it just whenever you go talk about like the thing inside, then it will be, have a higher refractive index, which is a constant number. Uh, however, I mean this is very normal, right? I mean I don't I don't think this is a stupid idea. I think whoever designed the first optical fiber is already quite smart. Uh, but then 
the next one, this one, the graded index is even smarter. All right, if you try to read here, um, I think here is even smarter, but then I'll explain here. The basic idea is uh, if we say the light who travel in the middle, let's say for, let's say for this yellow one, okay, travel straight in this angle, so go straight versus uh, this one right which go in a certain angle then of course you say hey green one go for a longer path all right longer path and uh, the yellow one will go for a shorter path and therefore assuming they are the same speed okay the, the color here just to, to refer easily here um, then the yellow one surely if they are the same speed same speed again yellow one will reach to the other end faster but then what if we try to make this is actually I feel it's genius design what if we try to make the middle part that means like here the middle part here uh, the the more middle I don't know whether I should say the more mid closer to middle to to the center uh, the higher refractive index and if you remember what it means by higher refractive index that actually means the speed will be slower right for for whatever light is traveling so that actually means if you spend more time or small path passing through the light in the middle for this yellow one it will actually take longer time all right and for the green one the path is longer but then the path that it took at the side of course in the middle you can't you can't change it but at the side is it will actually be somewhat faster and so at the end of the day, the effects kind of cancel out. All right, isn't this a very brilliant idea? When I first see it, I was like really sure. How can people think of that? All right, and of course, in terms of manufacturing process, this one, of course, is much harder. All right, so that you can, you can make a, such a strange chain, like varying refractive index in this profile. Actually, I don't know how to make it. Maybe they try to change the uh, density of uh, the 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 uh, core itself maybe yeah maybe if you know how they, they manufacture it let me know right but I think it's changing the density of the core okay so this is uh what it means by graded index in the textbook there is uh, one more called the mono mode fiber which is like the one on the right hand side here and the basic idea is that this thing is more OP, right? you know, the terms that people usually say nowadays, overpower. That means, what it means is, uh, it's just so, so brilliant and so strong that, um, think about this, the problem that we talk about is since that they move at different paths, some path is longer, some path is shorter, then why don't we just make it more narrow, right? So th this is basically the, the way to, to handle it, make it more narrow, uh, narrow to a to a certain level that um, all the light will travel in just one single way or right? due to a some special phenomena uh, as you can read here uh, it said that it is not governed by conventional law so we can we cannot really explain here uh, directly but if you are interested uh, you may want to go on to the Google to search about it in fact I find I don't know why but there's no one calling this kind of fiber as more normal maybe i don't know i just can't find um what i find instead is that uh, people call it single mode instead but i think the idea i mean the name itself is the same because mono means single right and uh this is the core okay and in fact this is exactly the one designed by Go Kwan, right? if you know charles Kao, um one of the very famous physicists um I think he is actually, well, of course he's, he's Chinese, but then he studied in uh, America. Uh, he got the Nobel Prize in physics uh, because of this design, right? So you can, you can read about this. So um, he is a really brilliant scientist and also engineer uh, in electrical. Uh, and this is his statue in, if you ever visit uh, CHK, uh, I think in the engineering building, engineering faculty, uh, you will see his statue. Okay, uh, because he was one, he was the one who created uh, the electrical engineering department in CHK, and he was uh, the 
principal as well for a few years. All right, and it was uh, quite unfortunate that he passed away. I think two years ago, one or two years ago. Uh, and the reason why he was so respected by many people is that uh, the optical fiber that he invented uh, make a breakthrough basically. So he was not actually the one create the first optical fiber. Uh, a bit similar to Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison is not the one to make. Uh, the light bulb, but then he improved it. Uh, same for Charles Cow, he also improved it, but improved it in a way that is uh, way way better. I'll explain more when, when we talk about next video uh, attenuation. But then um, again, the the reason why people respect him so much, if you ever ask anyone about him, uh, first of all, he is very a very kind person, a very uh, gentleman, polite. And of course, uh, knowledgeable. Um, in terms of optical fiber, the most um, interesting thing is uh, he, of course, invented the single mode optical fiber, and apparently, it's a very big business. Uh, if you if he wants to, however, he did not apply for the uh, patent. Patent, I should say. Um, because apparently uh, nowadays we use uh, a lot of these. All right, there is actually a video where you can watch about. Uh, I will put the link in the description about how the um, connection, the network going around the globe. So imagine if he tried to apply apply for that, and he would earn a lot of money. But then uh, he actually had a vision that he wants to improve the internet and also the share of knowledge I mean etc like there's so many activity and of course you, you now understand uh, online even now you when you're watching YouTube as well so uh, he wants to improve simply the quality of life instead of earning money from people and in fact uh, there's so many things like even Wikipedia actually help a lot of people like especially in poor country to learn to study uh, without paying a lot of money so um, that's why uh, he deserves all the respect. Okay, so as a summary, here is a table. Uh, we have two kinds of dispersion material and waveguide. Oh, I forgot to put down this. Um, maybe I'll, I'll write it down now. So for material, uh, it will be due to different wavelength of light and they would have different reflective index causing different speed in optical fiber and therefore different time to arrive on the other end. And for improvement, in fact, I would say um, both graded index or mono mode fiber is to improve both of the dispersion. So I can't, I can't say which one is only solving one of the dispersion. Actually, it's both dispersion. For graded one, um, is to make the middle core has a greater with the in greater refractive index, so that it takes longer time and balance out the traveling time. Uh, when the light travel some at the more straight or some uh, at the side uh, mono mode is just to make it very narrow so all light travel in the same path so, right, so no path difference basically for wave guys simply uh, it's just due to a different path all right and then that will be different length if you want to say and then different length will cause different time okay so um, here we have got an example uh, which I think is very self-explanatory so I would uh, just leave it to you you can try to read uh, the basic idea and in fact this is a good question practically it's a good question but it's a very simple question so I think you can just go through it by yourself so the basic idea is uh, is trying to show you within a optical fiber if a certain light goes straight how much time it take if a certain light go in a certain way that take us the it will take the longest time maximum number of total you know, that means the longest time then how much time will it take so basically it's trying to find out the most extreme time range so you can see that uh, one here is 25 uh, microsecond 26 microsecond all right so you can try to uh, read it and there is actually a um, example I mean not example the practice question here uh, very similar to the example so uh, pause the video now try it out we'll check the answer okay so uh, let's take a look here 
so what we have is we have the let's see the optical fiber actually has a length of 8km and then you know the refractive index and you know the critical angle so part A is simply asking you the speed of light in the core uh, for this one you just have to recall one equation I don't know whether this equation is in your data booklet let me check data booklet Oh, here uh, it is not here is it in I think it's maybe in wave kind of kind of you may say kind of uh, imagine this is vacuum M1 is vacuum then maybe you can work it out uh, but I suppose you have actually memorized this equation in RGCSE also. So what you could simply do is, you know, C is uh, speed of light in vacuum, V is that particular medium which is the core we're referring, and then N is the refractive index. So you can find V, uh, which is the speed. Part B is the main course, right? So basically it says uh, calculate the maximum and minimum time it's taken for the ray to travel. So basically uh, the how much time it takes. So for minimum, it's easy, simply just go straight, right? So it's more about how we can calculate for maximum because for maximum, it's not easy uh, to calculate directly. Think about this, when you have uh, tried to travel more up and down, then that will take the longest time, of course, right? rather than going straight. So that's why we have to use the idea of critical angle uh, like this so imagine there's a light going like this always 82 uh, degree and so in that case then that will be longest time however then you may say hey how how do I know uh, how I, I don't even know how thick the wire is right we only know it is 8 km so how can we know um, how much time it takes right because there's no way we can find the path and the the answer is actually no, you can actually find a path because if you think about this, what you can do is imagine there is a line here and then there's another line here, which let, let me label it in purple. Okay, or oh, it's very hard to read. Uh, maybe yellow. Okay, yellow. You can, what you can do is you can actually flip, flip, flip this one to this. All right, like exactly the same length flip to this and so this will make the same line and then for this one you can translate to here translate to here and this one is also the same flip and translate to here so at the end you try you will try to make a triangle like what I show you here all right just think about that all right just to to simply like those IQ question you just have to shift each line to to the side and actually you make a lot of uh, I mean you, you make a big triangle in this case okay and not to forget that's the length this one the length is 8km and so what you have to do is just to find D which is the actual path that the light travel through in this situation so by looking at this triangle then you can surely write down this equation and find out d is actually 8.08 km okay so once you find that you just simply use the normal simple equation uh, distance divided by velocity then you can find the time so the answer is uh, 41 microsecond and versus 40.6 microsecond so it's actually a very little difference of time in that case uh, if we talk about 8 km but 8 km actually is not a lot uh, if you ever try to play any online games, okay, online games, uh, if you try to play some online game, that's the server, I'm not sure if you know, understand what I'm saying. If the server is maybe somewhat in Hong Kong, in Taiwan, or in, I don't know, then usually it's easier. The connection, the we call it latency, like whether or not the game is lagging or not, or not, or the ping, uh, then it would not be a lot. Probably it would be something like 20 milliseconds. All right, um, because of the distance. And if you try to play a game uh, that's the server maybe in Europe, US, then the ping or the latency would increase to until maybe uh, 200 milliseconds. That would be a lot. So in terms of maybe you're trying to play some first person shooter or anything, 
which require you know esports is now very popular nowadays. Uh, that it would take so much time to read. I mean, it, it will uh, make a big inference in your gameplay. So uh, that's why it's quite important. Let's take a look of the last question. Pause the video now and try it out. Okay, so right here, uh, what we have is uh, actually a very simple question. So it says, uh, what will happen? I mean, this, if this is input, then what will happen to the output if this is a long distance? And if you remember the diagram we, we talked about in you know, previous pages, uh, the basic thing that you have to remember is it will spread out more for this particular one block. Uh, this is like signal, this is like 1, and imagine this is 0, this is 1, this is 0, something like this. Okay, and then this will become more spread out. And not to forget that the area will be reduced. So I think my drawing is fair because apparently this area is much bigger than this area, right? So I think this is alright. So same for for this. Okay, roughly, okay. And so uh, that's why attenuation will be our next uh, subtopic. All right, try to make it more quantified, uh, quantitative, I should say. Okay, so um, that's all.